Starting off with our more significant reworks, we have Arissa. As you can see, she's got 500 health. She's also got a heat mechanic going on here. And you can see filling up on the right side here is this heat bar. She's firing these orbs that do damage. It's a little bit less damage than the lasers we're used to. And it apparently suffers from greater fall off, less damage as we get higher on this heat. Stop firing and it starts to fall off there. As we move on to her next change, we are going to see the Javelin Toss, and that is quite a bit of fun. Excuse me, we're jumping onto the Javelin Toss here. And that one, we can see here, nice one, throws them into the wall. You can get that stun action there, which will interrupt things. That's quite nice, more damage if they hit a wall like that. So that's a fun one, you get that to mix in. It is default bound to right click as your secondary fire there. We can move on to the Javelin Spin, and if you were looking at the Javelin Spin, which we are going to see right here, this is basically DM. It's eating ults, all sorts of good stuff right there. It also makes her move a little bit faster, knocks people back pretty great, and because it knocks people back, and you move a bit faster with it, there's obviously gonna be lots of opportunities to do things like this and send people off the edge and apparently throw spears at them as Yidl is doing here. You don't actually have to throw the spear on them. That's just styling points. And then she does have fortify, but let's just go ahead and move on to her ults because we can talk about both of these at the same time. As you can see, she is charging up her ult here. That's fun. We're gonna go ahead and see that one more time. You don't actually have to charge this up all the way. You can fire this off at any point when it's charged. It's just gonna build up in how much damage it does. She does get her fortify benefits when she is like this. When she is fortified, she is generally gonna move a bit slower. <laughs> generate a little less heat at least currently and she's also going to take less damage of course as well as get this over shield here that we're used to so you do see some nice benefits for that this automatically activates when you ult and when you ult you pull in the robots or the enemies as we saw here the longer you charge it up the more you do so there could be some good combos here maybe pull some people in hit them with a sojourn slow grenade keep people slowed for a really really long time because there doesn't seem to be any diminishing returns on slow this will pull them in all sorts of good stuff here and let's go ahead and move on to doomfist here doomfist has had a rework as well though honestly i'd say it's not as significant the first thing that we're going to see is doomfist does now have more health we don't have the appropriate amount of health here so we'll pull that in a second it's 450 but we're seeing 565 because he does still get over health that wasn't clear from the card that blizzard released yesterday but we do know that do now know that he still does get his overshields for landing abilities so let's take a look at slam this is old doomfist this is uh oh, excuse me that was new doomfist this is also going to be new doomfist and you'll notice we did we didn't do an uppercut to get up here we can look at this one more more time that was the seismic slam right there and th or this is also going to be the seismic slam but it was the seismic slam to go upwards and then canceled out of or effectively canceled into a rocket punch here so there's still going to be some doomfist tech there's still going to be hey let's jump around the map do cool stuff because the seismic slam itself works a little bit more like a winston leap but a mid jump cancelable winston leap and it does apply the slow to opponents that you land on as opposed to the knock up that we are used to from overwatch one let's go ahead and check out doomfist's other new ability which is going to be the power block and that is going to give us 90 percent damage reduction when we're doing it and it's also going to empower your rocket punch rocket punch isn't all that significantly changed it's about half as much damage caps out at about 90 if you punch someone into a wall and you haven't charged it up extra i don't mean charge up with its time i mean charge it up by doing this power block here as you can see this is power block makes it so it's a directional shield you take 90 percent less damage as you absorb damage there you can go hey as you get more to a, up to 100 damage absorbed there that's going to power you up to make your punch hit harder do more damage perhaps even take some of the cooldown off of it and you can hit multiple people with that so that's what we're looking at with the doom fist here 
And then let's move on to the tags that have been changed less. We're gonna start here with Diva. And Diva, not too much to talk about here. She's got an increased health pool, 650, and she's now got three seconds of DM available to her. She did pick up that extra health in armor, so that definitely helps out. If we wanna jump on to Winston, we're also gonna see that he has a little bit of extra health, and we're not gonna complain about that. A Little bit of extra health there in the form of armor. 50. And then we're also going to look at, we know he has that new right click charge that he can do now. He can snipe people with that as poke phase. You can spend up to 20 ammo on it to get 50 damage if you hit them with it. But what Flats is going to demonstrate here is instead of using it to snipe, a leap combo where you leap in with it pre-charged, release it because you can hold it for a moment, and then you go ahead and land on them, do the normal melee cancel, that sort of thing. Increases your potential burst damage a bit at the cost of at the cost of having a little bit less ammo to work with there. But if you go into standard melee weaving, that could still work out pretty nice. Gives you some pretty good burst damage at the beginning there. Wrecking Ball, nothing too, too wild about him. Let's jump up here and we're gonna see, hey, Wrecking Ball's great. We like Wrecking Ball. The one thing we may notice is that we have 700 health again. What we've also discovered is, at least with what we saw, it looks like the adaptive shield is back to its old numbers, its pre-nerf numbers of you get the 100, then you get 100 per target, as opposed to the lower amount that you get per target towards the end of Overwatch 1's lifespan here. Reinhardt has had a few more changes, but honestly nothing too, too wild. As we jump ahead here, and we can see, hey, look at this, Reinhardt, Look at the amount of turn that you got on that pin. That's quite a bit more that you can turn. You can also, of course, cancel your pin early. And as we see down here, it is on only an eight second cooldown. His barrier is down to 1,200 health, so we're we're not gonna have any wild barrier creep, super strong barriers. We're not gonna have a double shield meta. They're really making sure barriers are under control. Took away Orissa's, reduced Reinhardt's to 1,200, but Reinhardt did get extra health. Has a max of 650 now, with the most of that additional health coming in the form of armor, as we can see there. So that just brings us over to Zarya and Roadhog, and they don't really have anything too impressive to talk about. We've mostly known for Zarya that she can now use her bubble charges on either. She has two bubbles available to her. She can use both of those bubbles personally. She can use both of those bubbles on a friend. Doesn't really matter. She apparently used to have a bug that's part of what led to the Reaper uh, Sojourn Zarya meta of her beam ignoring armor, her beam damage ignoring armor. That's been fixed, but that was part of what led to that meta. But the only actual change we're seeing other than, hey, she can use either of her bubbles on either, just has two charges, we also see she's gone up to 475 health. Which brings us over to Roadhog. Oh, brings us over to Roadhog. Roadhog, really nothing to talk about here. Health went up at 700 health. Okay, that makes sense. Bit of an increase there. So that's really what you need to know about tank changes. We've seen our somewhat significant reworks for Orissa and Doomfist. We've seen mostly health gains for the others. Little bit of a utility gain with Winston in terms of his right click there. Obviously a bit more survivability gains for all of them, be that in the form of health, armor, in the case of uh, Wrecking Ball getting that bigger adaptive shield back, and D D.Va the case of more defense matrix. So there is some help that they got. It was for a while looking like they might not be getting that much help going into Overwatch 2, but they're not like twice as strong as tanks would have been before. They are, however, stronger, a little bit bulkier than they were in Overwatch 1 to help supplement for the fact that there will only be one of them. But what do you guys think? Are you guys excited about this? Do you think this is going to be great? Are you looking forward to it? Do you think these tanks are now now going to be bulky enough to survive if you'd made them twice as powerful they'd have just run over everything is this the right amount of buff that they got or is this a case of hey it's just gonna feel really bad with one tank and they're going to get run over and an extra hundred health on roadhog an extra second of dm for diva these just aren't enough let me know what you think in the comments down below i'll certainly be curious and we'll be covering more of this do be sure to like and subscribe as we'll be covering more overwatch 2 content here we'll get into analyzing the game, how it should be played, how you can get good fast. We'll be attending that, uh, applying that contender's brain to it. But that'll do it for now. Thanks. Temporal out.